Hey everybody, it's Ginger on Wheels here again. Thanks for stopping by the channel where we get to test and unbox the latest electrically wheeled gadgets. Today's video is gonna be about this 9Bot Max. It's a two part video. The first part is gonna be more of a Ginger on Wheels workshop type video where we do an installation of a secret surprise. And then the second part is gonna be testing the installation outside, we're gonna do some ride footage. So this will be part one. Let's go ahead and roll the intro and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so you probably saw my 9Bot Max review video, and we learned that the top speed of this scooter falls somewhere around 18, maybe 20 miles an hour if you're lucky, downhill. We've got a kit today though. This comes from MyMaxMods.com. It's a 48 volt battery upgrade kit for this scooter, and it's supposed to be relatively plug and play installation. So I'm gonna go ahead and install the battery and update the firmware in the scooter. And allegedly this thing will hit near 30 miles an hour with the upgrade, plus we get a ton of more range. So I'm hoping it'll be pretty straightforward. I haven't done it yet. So hopefully you're okay with joining me on my expedition to get this installed and we can go test it out. Okay, welcome to my phone. The first step in upgrading your battery to the 48 volt kit is updating the firmware in your scooter. And when you buy the scooter, the uh, owner will send you a zip file that has the firmware in it. And you need to go to your Play Store and download an app called Xiao Flasher or Zao Flasher. Xiao Flasher? Anyway, open up the app. And then this is me just turning on the 9Bot Max scooter like I normally would. And hopefully it'll show up here under some of the Bluetooth. There it is, NB Scooter 0445. I can see it there now. So I'm gonna click on that. Gives you a little disclaimer here. Software is provided as is with no warranty. Okay, blah, 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 I agree. Ooh, app got removed from German Play Store due to legal takedown notice. Interesting. Anyway, it doesn't relate to me, I'm in the US. So this is what it looks like when I am connected to the scooter on the Xiao Flasher app. See the serial number of your scooter, total mileage, etc. What I'm going to do is click select the zip file, which is right underneath that plug icon that shows I'm connected. I'm going into the download section, and I see a file right there called drv126kevin.zip, and that is the zip file I was given with the new firmware on it, so I'm going to click on that. And then I'm going to click flash selected zip file. It'll ask you to do a little contribution if you want to support the makers of the app, but I'm not going to do that right now. And then the scooter beeped and my firmware is updating or flashing, I guess you'd call it. It's much quicker than I expected, I'm not going to lie. Okay, and that's it. It says flash successful, reboot scooter. So I'm going to turn my scooter off. and turn it back on and we should have the new firmware on there and the new firmware that you just downloaded and flashed is compatible with the stock scooter and also the 48 volt battery upgrade kit so you don't have to reflash it if you want to switch back okay you got that taken care of it was relatively pain-free just updated the firmware on my phone using the Xiao flasher app so next step is to i'm going to set this aside for now Okay, so this is the bottom of my scooter. Got it just propped up on a toolbox here because the first thing we gotta do is take off the bottom plate on the bottom of your scooter. This is just made of plastic and it's held in with Torx screws. They're different than Phillips or flathead screws. They have a little star pattern and the size on the bottom here is T15. It's the size of the Torx screw. So I've got the Torx bit loaded in my drill here. And what you do is just go ahead and turn these all counterclockwise and remove all the screws along the whole bottom piece and this plastic cover will come off. So let's do, go ahead and do that. By the way, serious life pro tip. If you can get a, one of these magnetic tray thingies, you can keep all the screws in there. You just chuck the screw near it and this thing will suction up and hold on to all your screws so you don't lose any of them. So there are quite a few of them along the bottom of the scooter here. I feel like I should mention the reason why we're taking the bottom of the scooter off is because we have to thread a cable through where the rubber gasket and the brake line go into the scooter down into the battery compartment. For the record, there are two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18 screws holding the bottom plate on here. 
go ahead and pop this off. Oh, it did have a little waterproof tape sealant sort of thing in the back here, so it kind of sticks on, but came off relatively easily. So here are your motor wires, controller, your battery. Mine is blinking blue. Is my scooter still on? Let me make sure that's not the case. Nope, scooter is not on. I guess that just blinks blue all the time. Never knew that. I guess up inside here, there's supposed to be some foam that's holding the cables in place. And step one is to remove that foam that's just up in this little hole in front of the battery pack. Got a little set of needle nose pliers here. Let's see if I can grab and pull the foam out. I prefer not to rip this thing if I don't have to, but looks like I might have to. It's got a slit in it. But you need to rotate it to get it out without, oh, I did it, okay. So this is the foam piece that's jammed up in the top of here, at least on my scooter. It's got a little slit in it, so you can pull it down and then just slide the cable out through here. Okay, so about six inches up in the neck of the scooter, I see some more foam stuff. I'm gonna go ahead and pull that out now. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, that was kind of annoying. I really hope future kits include a tool to help you get the foam out of here because my screwdriver wasn't long enough. None of the tools I had were long enough. So I had to sacrifice a coat hanger and I bent it up into a little hook here. And I just repeatedly jammed it up into the hole where the foam is and tried to hook a bit of the foam on the end of this and then pulled it out. And I just pulled it out piece by piece. You can see all my foam bits here, but man, that was annoying. One other thing you can try and do, I didn't have a spatula that was long enough, but Jam a spatula up through the foam, that might work, and then pull it out with a coat hanger. But like I said, I hope future kits include a tool to do that because far from plug and play. But anyway, once you do that, you take this cable that comes with the kit and it has XT60 connectors on both ends. One of the sides has a braided end cable on it. And this is the side that sticks out of the top of the scooter. And then the exposed, well not exposed, the insulated wire goes inside the scooter and you run it parallel along the battery here, just like so. Now, onto the fun stuff. We need to access the wire that's coming from the controller that has the XT connector hooked up to the battery. So I see a little foam piece here holding that wire in and I'm gonna re remove this little foam chunk. Okay, it's just a little rectangle cube and I'm going to pull the XT connectors out. This is insulated wire, so it shouldn't make a problem if I use metal tools, but famous last words, right? Okay, let's go ahead and pull from here. Okay, perfect. We're coming in along nicely. So this is the wire, the XT connector that comes out of the controller. Doop. And this is the end that goes into the battery. Doop. What we need to do is take this included Y adapter. This is included with the kit that you buy from my Max Mods. And you clip it into the end of the wire that we threaded through the scooter. This isn't plugged into anything on the other end yet, but we we'll just take the XT connectors and plug her on in. Oops, wrong end. Pretty hard to mess up. There's a square end and a circle end and a square end and a circle end. So just kind of snap that in there. Now, we're gonna unplug this XT connector here, which is connected from the factory. So it might be difficult. Let's see, it doesn't wanna pull apart easily. Probably a good thing for waterproofing. Ah, there's a little black sticker on this XT connector that prevents it from being pulled apart. So I'm gonna take the sticker off. Okay, pulled off my sticker. Oh. There's a little thing under here that says void. So you're avoiding the manufacturer warranty by doing this. And we're unplugged. So now you've got the female end and the male end. And on your Y connector here, you've got a female end and a male end. So you just line them up. And we're plugging this into here. And we're plugging this, which comes from the controller, into the single end. Okay, all right, next thing we have to do to make sure that this is all plugged in correctly so far is to take the XT connection that's running out of the top of the cable here, and we're gonna plug that into the actual external battery that came with the kit. So that's just one XT connection up here. Click that together, 
And then we have to make sure that the battery gauge on the scooter works. So let's go up to the top of the scooter here. And what I'm gonna do is just hold the power button and make sure that the display comes on and it confirms. We do have a battery gauge in the bottom here. We know that our connection is plugged in correctly. So all we have to do now basically is seal the scooter back up, tuck these wires in, put that plastic piece back on the bottom. And then we're gonna take this bag that came with the kit and we're gonna tuck the battery nicely inside the bag and attach the bag to the scooter and we'll be done. Let's go ahead and get that taken care of. So like I said, first step is to tuck these wires in, put the plastic plate back on the bottom. Okay, that took a little bit of jiggling, but I'll save you some time and tell you how I tucked it. There's the single connection of the Y piece down here. It's tucked into the stock battery connection. The uh, double XT connectors are just gonna shove between the battery and the controller there. And then I've got the rest of the cable routed up along the side there. You wanna be careful when you're shoving these XT connectors in here that you don't knock any connections loose on the control board in here, cause that would be bad. Just be ginger with it, take your time and you'll get it all tucked away. I'll get sorted. Okay, next step, put the plastic piece back on the bottom. Now here's a little pro tip. If you have some silicone sealant, you can use clear or black, whatever you want. Just go ahead and run a super tiny fine bead around the edge of here. And then when you put this back on, it'll dry and create a little waterproof seal. Now nah, we're gonna screw them back in. If your drill has a clutch on it, you can adjust the number to a really low resistance. That way you can try and prevent yourself from stripping out these screws or cracking the plastic piece on the bottom. You don't wanna put them in too tight. If you look really closely at the screws, there's actually a dab of blue Loctite on there from the manufacturer. And again, it's in your best interest to reapply that Loctite if you don't wanna to have to do regular maintenance on your scooter. And to be clear, we're using blue Loctite on that. Don't use the red Loctite. Blue Loctite will come out if you unscrew it. It just makes the screw a lot more secure inside the threads, but the red Loctite is actually permanent. And the only way to get that out is with the heat gun. And you can't use a heat gun on this area because this is plastic and that'll melt. So if you use red Loctite, they'll be stuck in there forever. Okay, next little step is to secure the battery inside the bag that this kit comes with. Hopefully you can see this, but you'll open the pouch up that came with the kit, and then the back of the pouch, there's a little slot right here for you to put this auxiliary battery inside. And once you get it in there, it is pretty secure inside the bag. It doesn't do much wiggling. And if you've got the option for these front USB ports, they need to be plugged into the battery too. Coming out of the bag, there's a little two-prong connector and then you connect that to the two prong connector coming off the battery. And then your USB ports should work on the front of the scoot. Here, a nice little click for confirmation there. They're nice. Okay, now the last and final step, I guess before you charge it, if you wanna go ride it immediately, is to just secure the bag to this part of the bar here. So I'm gonna tuck in some of this excess wire. FYI, this wire coming off the battery comes off where the XT connector is. This is a charger specifically for that battery. And the kit also comes with a charger just for that battery alone. So when you're charging the scooter, you have to use the stock charger and also this little auxiliary charger and you get both those batteries charged up. And just so you know, another little FYI, I've got one of the older versions of this upgrade kit and the newer versions, I guess, have a little cutout in the side of the bag with that charger connection um, just readily accessible on the side of the bag so you don't have to unzip it every time you want to charge. Okay, let's get all this Velcro sorted here. So this Velcro strap goes behind that little front piece and you thread it through strappy hole here. Okay, got two on. And these ones can go around the front bar if you want. Not necessary, but nice to have, of course. It's not something you have to do every time you want to charge the battery, FYI. This is sort of a one-time pain. But once you get this all strapped onto here, then all you have to do when you want to charge it is just unzip this bag here and it'll be good to go. You can access the charging port that way. 
All right, so we got our mod all attached. Let's tuck this in a little more, make it look pretty. Perfect. Okay, so we're all hooked up. That's what it looks like from the top. Pretty cool. I got dual USB charging ports for all my gadgets. That'll be nice when I'm filming on GoPros. It does reduce the usable space on the deck a little bit. And we did compromise some of our waterproofing of the scooter because we took this grommet out. If you really wanted to, you could probably squeeze this grommet back in, but you'd have to cut a small chunk out of it to account for this cable going into the scooter. So we did void the warranty, slightly less waterproof, but way more range and alleged 30 mile an hour top speed on a nine bot. Real quick, one thing I almost forgot to mention, this little doodad looks kind of like a really long USB stick comes with the upgrade kit. And this is in case you want to revert back to the 36 volt original scooter. You don't have to switch the firmware again, but you just unplug the XT connector from that battery inside the pouch and you plug it into here and it just completes the circuit and it will put it back to how it was before in case you have someone less experienced that wants to ride your scooter or maybe you just want to save the battery inside that pack for another time, I don't know. All right, everybody, that's it. We got the 48 volt upgrade installed. Go ahead and check out mymaxmods.com if you're interested in getting one. Tomorrow I'm gonna to go ahead and give this thing its maiden voyage, ride around the neighborhood a bit and see if it actually does get up to 28 miles an hour with me on it. I'll do a range test on it someday, but probably not tomorrow. So stay tuned for that one. But thanks again for sticking it through to the end and stay tuned for part two.